Hi. If you hear some noise over here, I apologize. They are working on the apartment next door. Today, I want to talk to you about prepping and the power of three. Now, I say the power of three. You can say whatever you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason I say the power of three is because you always have to give yourself options. And I'm going to discuss what I consider the power of three. And you can agree or disagree with me. And you can uh, switch things out however you see fit. But the power of three, to me, is what you need to survive, to have a life, a better life if something really bad happens. Um, we all see gas prices. We see electricity prices skyrocketing. That's going to affect a lot of people. And a lot of people are, are not going to be able to afford rent because of what's going on. Unfortunately, a lot of people are going to end up homeless. That's the bad thing about this economy right now. And this is not Russia's fault. This is Joe Biden's fault. This is the Democrats' fault. <clears throat> okay. Let me talk about the power of three. To me, the power of three means trying to consider every circumstance or situation you may find yourself in and trying to prepare for it. Now, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to go through a little list I made, and you may agree or disagree. That's your, your option. You can disagree if you like. I'm going to go through some things. We're going to start with food. All right. <clears throat> one on that list of food out of three buy you're going okay it's it's buy I go to my grocery store I buy things I can order things online I buy things absolutely correct you can now a lot of people that have um, dehydrators and even freeze dry machines the freeze dryers buy their stuff from a store so they're still purchasing that item, even if they're going to dehydrate or freeze dry it. They're still buying it. Most people that do that go to a store and buy their items. That's one. Buy. <clears throat> you can buy canned goods, box dinners. You can buy freeze dried foods, dehydrated foods. You can buy it offline. You can buy it at a store. Okay? That's one. Two is grow. <clears throat> now two, some other things will come in a little bit later on what you need for number two. Two, you have to grow your own food. You have to have some type of garden to grow your own food. So in a situation where the stores are empty or not getting deliveries or well society just breaks down in general <clears throat> let's say the power goes out the stores aren't going to stay open at least not for long anything in the stores is going to be either gone by them selling it or it's going to spoil so in a really bad situation you have to have a way to grow your own food Three, hunt or collect your own food. Now, hunt or collect means hunting, fishing, uh, scavenging. Um, if you know where some fruit trees are, you could get some fruit. If you know that there's a road with some blackberries growing on the side of the road, that is you collecting your own food. You have to be prepared for all three. Now, you can buy your food now, but the Democrats, specifically Joe Biden, said we're going to have a food shortage. Um, we've already seen this food shortage. We already know what's happening right now. So unless you have a way to grow your own food and hunt or collect your own food, number one is going to be pointless if it gets to there. There is no food in the stores. 
or you can't order food from Amazon or eBay or wherever you order from Grubhub wherever you take all three of these and if you remove one of these you still have the other two to rely on so that's buy grow hunt or collect and that includes fishing and hunt or collect now let's go to number two on my list water you have to have water to survive now the first thing I did put on the list is storage or storing of water you can store water in two liter bottles three liter bottles you can store water in I prefer not empty milk jugs you would have to absolutely clean that very very well before you store water in there but storing water is something every person should do they they recommend that a person needs at least one gallon of water a day per person correct well I don't consider that right I believe most people would use more than one gallon of water especially if you're trying to flush your toilet that can use a gallon of water right there just pouring the water in the bowl to flush your toilet so I believe that number should be higher now if you're just using it for drinking and maybe cooking you could probably get away with a gallon of water per day per person but if you live in a city an apartment where you have to flush the toilet you're gonna need a lot more than that one gallon per day especially if somebody gets upset stomach or gets sick so storage water storage is number one on my list for water Two, collect and rainwater now if it's raining outside and you have a bunch of 20 ounce bottles you can always cut the top off of them set them outside and collect rainwater now what I would prefer somebody did is had a much larger pot or something like that they could set outside and collect that rainwater you have to have a way to collect water if your water runs out and if the power grid goes completely down or your city has problems and issues the water can go off so you have to have that water storage is number one on my list for water collect rainwater or collect water is number two that doesn't it doesn't matter if you're going to a river a lake a pond as long as that water is good you can drink it now I would out of a river or pond or lake I would definitely go with number three which is filter and purify you can go outside after rain and scoop water out of a mud puddle as long as there's no oil or anything else in there and you can clean and purify that water basically filter it and purify it now the water is going to be have a brown hue to it even if you do this but it will be safe to drink so number three on that list is 100% filter and purify that is your water situation storage collection and filter and purify all three of those you definitely need all right let's go into the next on my list which is shelter now this is debatable for some people you do not have to have all three on that list on this list in fact I don't have some things on this list for a reason but for your average person you need three types of shelter and I'm gonna tell you why one would be a hard shelter like a house an apartment something like that now I do consider the camper trailer um, as a hard shelter but you don't have to have a camper trailer two on my list is a drivable shelter such as a car van motorhome 
Um, if you have a way to move a camper trailer, you know, a truck, you can consider that a drivable shelter. If you don't, then it's a hard shelter, stay in place hard shelter. Now, you don't have to have a car, truck. You don't even have to have a camper trailer or a hard shelter. This is for people that have the vehicles that if they have to leave their home, they can, they can actually stay in their vehicle. And they can stay out of the weather, the rain, and you know, keep all their stuff in there, um, take supplies with them. Number three on shelter is some type of tent or tarp. Now, I advise everyone have this. Whether you have a vehicle or not, and whether you have a hard shelter or not, such as a camper trailer, or a truck camper, or whatever, or a van. If you don't have a vehicle, I recommend this type. Now, this is just to keep you out of the elements. The rain, wind, snow. Now, this will not keep you alive during a minus 30 degree snowstorm. But, it will keep most of the elements off you, such as wind, rain, even light snow. Now, I say a tent or a tarp. Well, if you can't afford either one of those, you can go to a dollar store, buy two shower curtains, and some paracord, and you can put your paracord across two trees, or, you know, you can take a shower curtain and tack it up on the side of a house or something like that and angle it out and then put another shower curtain going down and overlap the top one overlap it to the bottom one that will keep you out of the elements that'll keep rain and stuff off of you for basically three dollars you can create some type of shelter to keep you out of the elements all right Next, tools. Now, I recommend everybody has some of these tools. Now, number one on that list, of course, is a shovel. Number two, an axe or a machete. It doesn't matter if it's a small hatchet, a medium-sized machete, large machete. It doesn't matter if it's a big axe, small hatchet, Either a either or or both, you know, an axe or a machete. You need some way to chop wood if you need to use wood. And you can use those to defend yourself if you have to. That's number one was shovel, two is axe or machete, and three is a hard rake or a hoe. Now this right here goes with food. Growing your own food. You're not going to grow them seeds unless you break that dirt up and break that ground up. So, that's where the shovel and either a hard rake or hoe come in handy. So, you can actually make rows for your garden, dig for your garden, break up the soil for your garden, so you can grow your garden. That's just my opinion. Now, I do not have a hoe. We do have a shovel. We do have a hard rake. But we also have our electric tiller that I can run. All right, next is fire. This one's easy. Three different ways to make fire. A lighter or lighters, a pack of lighters, Bic, the cheap ones, whatever, some matches, doesn't matter if it's on the box, in the little booklets. Matches are number two, lighters number one. Number three, some type of barrel rod or fire starter. Now the reason I'm saying this is because you can get a small ferrule rod fairly cheap for a few dollars. And if your lighters go bad or get wet, they're gone. Your matches get wet, they light and they burn down before you get your fire going. You'll go through them quickly. So you need something 
that even if you get it wet, it's going to work. And you don't have to worry about it running out of fluid or, or things like that. I recommend all three of those. All right, let's go to the next one, which is light. You absolutely have to have light in a situation. Um, you have to have light for security. You have to have light to find your way around your home or if you are somewhere else. You have to have light. And a lot of people are, well, I have my cell phone. Your cell phone is going to go dead in a situation. One on my list is candles. Of course, it's always a good idea to have candles. Two is some type of lamp oil or kerosene lamp that uses some type of liquid. And three is solar or battery lights. Now, three can also include hand crank lights. Now, once again, you do not have to have all of these as far as I would have candles and I would have some type of solar lights or battery lights. But remember, your batteries go dead, they're worthless. If there's no sun, you can't charge your solar lights. Hence, the oil lantern, if you can afford one. If you can't, buy extra batteries for your lights and extra candles. Let's go to the next one. Kitchen tools. Now, this is something a lot of people don't think about if they're having to leave their home or something really bad happens. You have to have a way, one, to cook, hence the fire. Um, kitchen tools. Pots and pans. Now, think about this. The cheap, generic, crap, um, non-stick pans are not supposed to be used on high heat, ever. That non-stick comes off and it is very toxic. Do not ever use a non-stick pan in an open fire or where there's extremely high heat. Put pots and pans. Even if you only have one pan that's like pure aluminum or copper or something like that, as long as, or cast iron, even better. If you can afford cast iron or fine cast iron, that'd be perfect. That can go into extreme heat or straight into fire. But pots and pans, one, that's on kitchen tools. Two, plates, bowls, and silverware. And you're going, well, wait a minute. You've got three things there. Yeah, but that's common sense. If you have plates and let's say you have something that needs a bowl like soup, you can't eat it unless you have spoons or a bowl. So that's a given. That's basic common sense. Number three, I recommend two different types of can openers. And you're going, you're going, why? Alright, first of all, I recommend the type that you just push into the lid for an emergency can opener. And you're going, okay, any other type of can opener? Any regular turn can opener will do. And you're going, why are you worried about that? I don't go on midnight. If you're by yourself, say you're out scavenging for food, and because you're starting to run low, a single person can take the pop-type can opener with them. Everyone else can use the other can opener. And if you're using the pop-type can opener that punches down in, that leaves really sharp edges. If you're using the turn type, then you can use those cans for things like cooking or drinking out of. That's why I recommend two different types of can openers. And you can get those little punch type can openers very cheap. All right, let's go with cooking. Once again, three. Campfire. Yeah. Midnight fire. A campfire is one type of cooking. That includes an open pit, 
uh, having a fire inside some bricks any type of campfire now remember you have to have eh, sorry midnight for my nose eh, really any type of fire outside is a campfire number two a barbecue pit or a wood stove now I'm not suggesting you run out and buy a large cast iron or steel wood stove for emergencies I have shown a small put together wood stove basically that's about this tall and you feed small pieces of wood in the side of it and the flames come out the top now something like that would be perfect if you don't want a huge campfire producing a lot of smoke a lot of light or you can use a barbecue pit to cook with of course you would have to use wood hence you need the axe or the machete a lot of these are interchangeable as you can see three on cooking now this is something a lot of people are going to uh, not agree with. Propane RV stove or some type of fuel camp stove with you put the, the fuel in it in the, in the container, the cylinder, or butane or propane single burner cook stoves or camp stoves. Now you're going, you didn't bring up natural gas. Now if you already have a propane stove at your house, of course you don't need anything else unless you have to leave your home. But it's a good idea to have something else in case you have to leave your home. I didn't bring up natural gas for a reason. Natural gas lines can be disrupted. And a really bad situation we won't have natural gas everything will be shut down nobody's gonna be working so I left natural gas off the list but if that's what you want to use make that your first cooking appliance and then get some other type of cooking appliances such as a small mini wood stove make a fire pit um, a barbecue pit or the single burner butane or propane stoves once again power three here's one that's really important power three location now are you going to stay home during this entire thing that's up to you but what happens if you get chased out of your home or if there's a fire coming where you have to vacate or a group of people are going door to door you know stealing food and supplies location is important most people will try to weather it out at home but do you have a plan if you can't stay at home one of course stay home two under location is a friend or relatives home their house so if you have a friend or relative that has a larger home and you talk to them and say hey if something bad happens can I come to your house and then I can help you secure your home as long as I'm there most people agree to that location stay home friend or relative that's two and three outdoors now outdoors can be a variety of things such as the woods it could be under a bridge to help protect you from the elements it could be in a tunnel such as a subway tunnel but remember a lot of people are gonna have the same ideas and you're gonna have to fight if you're in a group of people so be careful what you pick there but know your locations if you're gonna go out in the woods go there before 
you have to actually go there for a long period of time. Know the area. Know what's there. Are there trees there? Is there a spring there? A creek? Um, know the area. So location. Once again, three. Number four. This is basically, uh, not four, but this is basically my last one on the power of three, which is power. Have you thought about power? Now, a lot of people think about solar. Solar's great and all, but it depends on what you're trying to power. If all you want to do is charge some lights and a, a cell phone or smartphone, you don't need four, six, eight hundred watts of solar and a large DCAC inverter. What you need is a small, cheap, 12 volt, 5 amp, whatever it is, even a 3 amp um, solar, solar panel. That's number one on power, which is solar. That varies and depends on your situation and circumstance and what you're trying to power. Now remember, if you have a $2,000 or not dollars, but uh, excuse me, 2,000 watts of solar that's hardwired onto your house or into the power lines, you're not going to be able to take that with you. But if all you're trying to do is power, get enough power to charge your phone to see if you can hear... Uh, emergency broadcast or things like that a small solar panel a cheap small solar panel will be perfect for you number two on the list gas or propane generators and you're going wait you left off the battery generators or solar generators yes I did because unless you have solar panels you just bought a very expensive giant paperweight. Now I'm talking about not seven, eight hundred dollar generators here. I'm talking about something just large enough to maybe run your fridge and maybe a single light. You don't have to go overboard, but remember, generators are loud. Which means people will know you are there and they know you have that. Whether it's gas or propane. And propane generators are less efficient than gas generators. So, one is solar. Two is gas or propane generator. And it doesn't matter if it's a $99 generator. If all you're running is small stuff. Three. Once again, the power of three. Hand crank, bike charge generator, a bike generator. Now, this is for pretty much small items. And some things can be more than one on this list. Hand crank. This also has a USB out. For charging things. It also has solar. It also has a radio. So you can listen to see. You know information. Are these junk? Absolutely. I mean turning this hand crank. Is only going to get you about two minutes. Of phone power. But it's something. It's like. 20 minutes I believe of the radio. And like eight minutes of lights. For every minute you turn. But this has right here. It produces power. It gives you light. It's also solar. It's also a hand crank. Like I said. The power of three. A lot of these will interconnect. The pots and pans of course will go with the cooking. And the. The tools, uh, as far as um, if you're going to build a fire in your yard, you want to dig a hole there 
and pull grass back. You have to have a shovel for that or something to dig with. Um, you have to have a way to get wood if you're cooking outside. Or if you need the campfire for light at night. But remember, if you can see it, other people can see it. This is my Power of Three list. Now, I do not personally have a tent because I have a camper trailer. I also have a full-size van. So, we can stay in either one of those. What I have, you don't have to have. You just have to make your best judgment on what you need. Think about not just staying at home. But think about what if you have to leave. Think about, do I have enough water? And don't just say, well, I have water in my tap. Because if your water shuts off, you're in trouble. If you don't have water put back or a way to collect water. You're in trouble if you don't have a way to filter and purify water. Now, you can purify water a couple different ways. One, you can use bleach. Two, you can use water purification tablets. And three, you can just boil the holy hell out of it. Even if it's brownish, once you get the large sediments out and all the sand and dirt, and to do that, you can run it through a clean t-shirt to get all the sand and dirt out of that water and then boil the holy hell out of it and it's safe to drink. Power three. Like I said, you don't need the things I have. You need to think about who you are, where you live, what you're going to need. But, the first couple things are really important. Food. Buy, grow, hunt, or collect. And fishing goes with hunting and collecting. Water. Storage. Collect. Purify and filter. I mean, if you don't have a way to filter and purify that water, you're in trouble if the water's contaminated or there's bacteria in it. And see, that also goes with the fire. Because if you're getting your water out of a mud puddle outside, even if you filter it through a t-shirt, unless you purify that water, it's not safe to drink. So you have to have a fire and to have a fire, you either need propane, butane, um, natural gas. If you have natural gas, it can be shut off. But propane, butane, firewood. And to get firewood, you need a machete or a hatchet, a hatchet or an axe. A lot of these are interchangeable that you have to have to get all these. Now the ones that you don't have to have is a vehicle. If you own your own property and you own your own house, you're not worried about that. You're going to stay home and fight. But if you're renting and your landlord kicks you out or if a mob is coming towards your home, you're going to vacate. You have to have something to stay in or stay under. Hence, either the tent or the tarps. That includes dollar store shower curtains and just some paracord to put across here and then put a shower curtain over it, down a little bit, tie those down, put some rocks on the other end, and then go up with the other one over here, go down a little bit, and then tie it down. That's all you have to do to get some type of shelter. You know, like I said, this is my list. This is the power of three. Everything from location, to power, to cooking, to tools you will need, to food and water. Alright, I'm fixing to go. Um, as you can see, we do have another ice maker back here. That's actually how much my girlfriend really loves this bullet ice. I could not keep up with her <laughs> uh, ice usage. <laughs> So we actually had to buy another one. And 
Well, what can you do? Anyway, like I said, um, as far as power, you know, that's up to you. If you don't need power, that's something you can take off this list. If you don't need to charge or, or run your fridge, and all you need is something to charge your phone, you can watch stuff on your phone. You can listen to music on your phone. So if all you need is something like that, you can get a small solar panel, a cheap one, and charge your phone with. Um, you have to use common sense. Use your best judgment. If you don't ever plan on leaving your home, which that's entirely up to you, you may not need two can openers. It's a good idea to have two, though. One, especially if one breaks. You have another one. Two, if you have to split up and you have some canned goods and you're splitting those so one person can go here look for supplies and somebody else is going here, you both need a can opener because you're both going to have food. All right, that's it. I'm fixing to go. Um, this is my power of three list for basically a survival situation or a bad situation. Like I said, you can agree with me, disagree with me. You can make your own list. That's what I advise people to do. Make your own list. Think about your situation, your circumstances, where you live, where you will go. That is important. If something bad happens, are you staying home and just trying to stay there and survive? Or will you leave and go somewhere else? That is something you must think about. All right, I'm fixing to go. I appreciate you watching, and everyone have a good day. Bye.